Hi all, I have another amazing game of leader chess to show you against Stockfish in the 2018 ChessCon Blitz Battle, five minutes with a two second increment. And this is of particular interest to me, Leela playing white. It's in a French defense and in a variation which I've played quite a lot with black, namely D takes E4 and then Bishop E7, inviting the burn variation. So white gives up the dark square bishop voluntarily. And I've had some interesting games with this system with b6, bishop b7, later castling queenside. Off Anderson was also an exponent of this system. I actually got it originally from Gary Quillen when I when I played the International Master, now International Master Gary Quillen once in, in a junior sort of tournament ages and ages ago. And I became very fond of it because it has a lot of dynamic potential on this G file and with the two bishops, of course, uh, it's a position which is quite rich in imbalances. Uh, so let's see how both sides play this. Knight f3 from Leela. f5 immediately. Knight c3. And also Hikaru Nakamura has played the black side of this and sometimes I believe played for a quick bishop f6 and c5. And also even Magnus Colson has played this with black. So this is a really interesting opening to test these imbalances. We have uh, Stockfish being super aggressive on the dark squares now with Queen d6. I'm wondering if this is perhaps a bit too ambitious. Queen d6 has a sneaking idea to go for the classic poisoned pawn. The b2 pawn is sometimes labelled the poisoned pawn. And Stockfish is aiming immediately for that. Now, Leader actually plays Queen d2 here. If Lena plays rook b1, it seems black's dark square bishop will get aggressive and white has to be careful. Say bishop g2, knight c6, this knight can go back, but it seems as though black wouldn't have too many problems here. This should be at least equal and there seems to be a lot of pressure on, on the white centre. However, yeah, that, that actually st still seems fine for white, this continuation, but Lena is perhaps you know, baiting Stockfish here with this, the, the so-called, the iconic poisoned pawn. Will Stockfish dare take it? Uh, yep, in fact, Stockfish does take it. So rook b1, queen a3. Has Stockfish done some permanent damage to the position here? We see bishop g2. It seems this g file, Leela has kind of in advance now with this fincetto kind of sorted out any G file pressure. It's a lot more solid than usual. We have the move C6, which uh, provides support for Bishop D8 and sometimes uh, the Bishop going to this diagonal and sometimes the Queen being supported by the Bishop. So it's an interesting move, C6. Uh, you might think Bishop B4, then Rook B3 is, is good for White. It's the, it seems this position with Knight E5, this is quite comfortable and in fact there's a tactic here bishop takes c6 behind the scenes which would be favorable to white here this is a remarkable tactical idea hitting the queen hitting e7 and so yeah this is just a disaster for black so there are some disasters behind the scenes already here in this line if we look at this again so 95 97 yeah it seems as though there's a lot of pressure here and uh, otherwise if queen b6, then just knight takes b4 with a big advantage to white. So black has to be careful. Uh, we have knight e2, so extinguishing any bishop b4 anyway, but also offering another pawn. Is this pawn also poison? Is this double poison for stockfish? Well, stockfish does take it. And I think we can safely say this is pretty committal from white to lose the two pawns but can we also say it's very committal for black because black really hasn't developed too many pieces here so this is the world champion in computer chess and most of its pieces on the first rank okay apart from this bishop and the queen so the queen's been indulging in eating kind of poison pawns here is it punishable well Leela castles knight d7 Rook b3, and this gives the impression that maybe with the queen cut off, that there's also the possibility now of queen c3 and rook a1 to kind of checkmate 
the black queen and you'll notice now bishop d8 being used which eyes a5 so here if queen c3 there's always things like queen a5 now because the queen's also looking at preventing queen a5 but that's been enabled <clears throat> if we had b6 just to illustrate this queen c3 with the threat of rook a1 is strong and for example this position <clears throat> with knight h4 here is very tactical bishop takes c6 taking away the queen's escape square of b7 leads to the queen being checkmated basically like this with a big advantage to white so bishop d8 rook fb1 uh, on here in this position if queen c3 then there's just queen a5 facilitated by the bishop on d8 so rook fb1 now and now h5 is played uh, alternatives queen a5 here queen e3 this should be actually enough compensation for white on b6 yeah knight e5 here is is actually uh, very strong for white in fact black has big king safety issues if black castles here um, with knight f4 and knight h5 this is devastating yeah, black would have to give up the queen and just get mated. So there are some dangers here of black castling king side illustrated by that variation. So knight f4, we have h4, the king still stuck in the center. So this is quite committal damage, really. The queen's won these pawns, which are very, very distant uh, for any winning prospects with them. In the meantime, as they say, the middle game have, has been created by the gods before the end game. So queen e3, uh, which sets up a lot of pressure now, pinning the e6 pawn potentially for d5 uh, but quite often any c any d5 the dark squares are weakened so let's see what happens h takes g is played on king f8 then knight takes h4 this position is interesting knight h g uh, knight h to g6 check and this is very good for white with d5 this is really quite a crushing continuation white has got a big advantage there so hg hg king f8 and now c4 and it looks as though in a way this reminds me of the formatic games where i always thought c4 and d5 breaks up black's already kind of unstable pawn structure but that really isn't the case here with the bishop on d8 because the bishop really is prepared for for bishop b6 with pressure on f2 and in fact that even coordinates with the queen in some lines we have black playing rook h7 here so here knight e5 is actually the intention uh if we go with d5 just to put this on the board which seems in a way thematic to try and further dice black's pawn structure the dark square bishop is the hero with bishop b6 and this position in fact with the queen having to support f2 shows the tactical nature of stockfish that really will pick up on the dynamic trump cards and after knight c5 it's actually getting to be a technically even position so leader has to be very careful about playing what seems to be a very attractive thematic pawn break now knight e5 actually is wonderful in comparison now of the knight takes d takes because we can see that bishop b6 here there's always c5 black played a6 uh, sorry black played queen a5 queen a5 but let's have a look at a6 for a moment as a token to see what is white's plan it turns out that the celebration of this pawn is of vital importance supporting f6 and the plan would be bishop f3 with the idea of knight h5 to f6 to get a kind of form pawn on f6 uh, so for example like this by the way there is a t-shirt uh, company which uh, youtube have been pestering uh, people to join and i have joined it with the first t-shirt being form porn so watch out for that <laughs> i can give you a link in the pinned comments because <laughs> the, the form pawns are everywhere with leader games i thought it would be a good uh, t-shirt so anyway queen takes c4 <clears throat> uh, we have rook d2 this in this line after knight f6 this is really dangerous for black because of things like this yes this is just crushing if bishop takes we take the queen otherwise the, the king is getting mated so once a knight lands on f6 if there isn't a form pawn it's like a fawny knight 
Uh, so that's that's one very interesting critical variation. If we go bishop b6, then white has reserved the possibility of repulsing the bishop with c5. And this is important. We can get back on this kind of form pawn related plan, basically. But no, in fact, even better, queen d3 holding b1 here is actually exploiting the queen for rook a3 to be checkmating the queen here. So for example here, rook a3 as well. And black would have to give up the queen. So there's always that issue as well as potential form pawns in these variations. So the queen tries to sort herself out with queen a5. But now back to the form pawn I'd plan, the naughty form pawn plan of knight h5 to f6. We have rook g7. And now actually king g2. White can play knight h5, uh, for example, like this. And it seems this is pleasant enough as well for white technically big advantage technically but we'll go with the game king g2 bishop g5 so it seems as though this is an annoying pin but look at this the point of king g2 was to sort of take use of the h file we've got two kind of entry files into black's position and leader is basically tapping into both of these files now whilst these are spectator pieces in this position queen c7 we have rook d3, so both rooks blasting down potential entry points on d and h files. Uh, there's also, if here, uh, as well as rook d3, it seems as though knight takes e6 check is interesting with this line is also a big advantage for white. So already this is a very, very nice position. Rook d3, we have rook g8. And now rook d6. So yeah, these pieces are getting entrenched after rook d6. It seems as though there's like this encouragement of any move moving of the b pawn and a potential to have a battery of the rook in the front of the battery if the queen joins the rook on the d file. We have queen e7. Uh, just to show the dangers, bishop d7, rook h7, entering entry point there is interesting with queen c5. This position is, this is a very interesting variation where, uh, yeah, there's big trouble here. Yeah, for example, like this, dominating the dark squares and winning material on b6 in this line. Then have a look at this with the queen joining the rook for rook d7 and both rooks on the d and h files have met up for f7. They reunited with a vengeance chatmate. So yeah, very, very dangerous position. Black's on the edge, it seems. Queen e7, queen d3. So not minding bishop takes f4 at all. Uh, black plays b6. If bishop takes f4, then yep. This one goes to d8, bang, rook takes g8, and then taking here, and even though black is two pawns up, yeah, because the middle game has been placed before the end game, it seems as though Stockfish would just be checkmated, basically, or lose the queen because of the g and the h files in any case. So these pawns are not going to be going anywhere. That's going to be a big advantage for white. The pawns are really not going to go anywhere. White's going to sink the teeth in here before anything happens on the queen side so uh, we have b6 not bishop takes f4 uh, rook h7 rook g7 is played so if bishop takes f4 here rook d8 check and that wins the queen uh, if bishop b7 here knight takes e6 check is very nice with the queen and rook crashing through for a chatmate. Uh, in this line, let's have a look at this again. Knight takes e6. If f takes e6, yeah, taking the queen, take on e6. This is crushing. Black's crumbling. There's, yeah, because of this pin, it's winning for the material for white. And if we look at this again, instead of that, we have bishop c8. Then bishop takes c6, and then this is again crumbling for black after that check, having to move the king. But then, 
yeah that's getting checkmated so there's wonderful variations you can check out in the pinned comments pgn of this uh game if you look at the comments section rook g7 was played and now we have actually a retreat with rook h5 <laughs> yeah a casual retreat if bishop takes f4 then check wins the queen uh, so that's horrible and actually checkmate there uh, so we have bishop b7 but now rook d d7 and this is actually winning material it's it's cutting out the king's escape squares if the queen fled uh, this is just getting t far too dangerous so actually the queen didn't flee we have rook d8 and now rook h8 check is a winning material after rook g8 rook takes e7 is absolutely just winning a piece actually after rook takes g8 check king takes doesn't matter about king takes e7 because then knight takes d3 is a rook up so here and yeah just one material so this is just a piece up for Leela coordinating on f7 taking out one of the the pawns ill-gotten pawns from the opening the extra pawn a pawn's gone b pawn's gone yep those naughty poison pawns never saw the light of day the extra pawns that were resulting from taking the poison pawns so stockfish got its just desserts later in the game and just a piece down and there's going to be no draw for naughty stockfish materialistic uh, because leader is equipped with table base transitioning doesn't matter if she gives back material as long as she knows it's a table base win heading for that stuff where it's a table base win here not bothering with knight and bishop leader is a bit lazy doesn't want to prove the knight and bishop <laughs> thankfully and just blocks <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't have to try and mate with knight and bishop okay another day for that and then coming in for the checkmate giving up the bishop simplifying to this check mate so an interesting interpretation of the burn variation from both Leela and stockfish stockfish goes a bit crazy uh on the dark squares with the queen like, attacking potential poison pawns queen queen scooping up two pawns on the queen side doing basically permanent damage to the position the king never really got a great shelter and it seems leela's use of the d and h files in, in you know the uh, coordination of the invasion points on things like f7 showed the great king safety issues that black was really facing um, and also of course a lot of time was lost trying to get this queen back without sort of getting trapped as well and then there was also this issue of the pawn on e5 supporting maneuvers like knight h5 to f6 so a really interesting game a number of themes there how really it is causing permanent damage to take out the so-called poison pawn or point pawns both of them b and a so remarkable stuff i hope you enjoyed this game as much as me and if if you did then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessmold.net play other youtubers uh you can also check out uh the youtube analysis of this game and other games from the improve menu learn from the masters youtube order i know some of you are already coming into the site and asking and becoming full members that's wonderful thank you so much uh, so you can see all the analysis on there uh, okay comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe to the notification bell all really appreciated thanks very much